Welcome to Fabtech 2019. I'm Dustin Deal, the laser product manager here at Amata, and I want to talk about a couple machines that made their uh, debuts this, this year at Fabtech. Uh, we made our North American debut with the Ventus here, off to my right, and this Regis machine that we're very proud of actually made its global debut. So the first time this was ever viewed by the public was this week at Fabtech. So I'm going to talk about some of the specifics of these machines, and I'm going to start with the Ventus technology. So I want to start out by pointing out some of the important key features of this. The first one being that the power supply from this machine is a single 4 kilowatt module. You'll see some information down here just below and I'll kind of get into some more of the specifics of what that means. There's a rating here, it's, it's a BPP factor and that's a beam parameter product. And what that does is it measures the quality of the beam and I'll get into that in a little bit more detail so you understand the importance of this single kil four kilowatt module. And then also when I make reference to it being much faster than a, four, a conventional 4K and then also the capacity that you're gonna see out of the machines that performs much like a six or an eight, that's gonna give you an idea of the importance importance of the, of the diode technology and the module technology that we employ here at, at Amata. So in being able to cut the thicker materials such as the higher wattage machines but doing it with the lesser power, you're going to see about a 30% reduction in the overall electrical uh, costs with this machine um, due to the patterns and some of the technology that we have within the, the Ventus technology itself. You're going to see a lot less dross, you're going to see smoother edges and reduced bevel. And then I'm going to talk about another uh, productivity mode, quality mode, and then lastly the curve control mode that we have and kind of talk about how that uh, comes into play when we talk about our, our bigger automation and robotic systems. So again, to talk about the single 4 kilowatt module, you're going to see we bring all the diodes together and we have a very high spot density. There's a lot of power focused right here at the peak of this 4 kilowatt module. Uh, this technology further to the right here, of my right, is uh, our INSYS technology that we have a little bit back further in the booth. That's where we're using our 3 kilowatt modules to get that high number, that 9 that we're looking for. You can see that as we have stacked these modules, there's been a, a slight degradation in the quality of that beam. So imagine if you would, if you weren't using the power for 4 or 3 kilowatt modules, maybe you're using a 1000 watt modules, you could see that that degradation will continue if you were to try to achieve 9 kilowatts of power, say using 10 lower powered modules. So that's kind of where we get into some side-by-side -side comparisons. You'll see the importance of that BPP factor that I mentioned earlier. So here's gonna be some of the patterns that we can achieve with the Ventus technology. And what that's gonna allow us to do is choose the right application for our goal. If, if, if it's simply productivity, we might choose one pattern. If it's quality, we'll choose another. If the curve mode that I spoke about earlier is important, we can switch to that. So that's all being done after the module and above the head. So that's where this weaving pattern comes into play. And as we all know, learning with the uh, INSYS technology, every material has a sweet spot in how it likes to be cut, and this allows us to achieve our end goal of productivity, quality, or curve. So I spoke about the INSYS technology, and that's one way to achieve cutting those thicker materials. And when cutting thicker materials, you need to have a little bit larger curve to remove that material. So that's how we did by changing the mode here. You'll see with the Ventus, we maintain that high spike density, but now with our weaving patterns, that's how we can achieve removing that material, allowing that gas to flow around the beam and create the uh, edge quality that you're gonna see on some of the samples. So here's the side-by-side -side comparison that I spoke of earlier. On the right here, you're gonna see the Ventus technology. And on the left, you're gonna see uh, the conventional four kilowatt module as well. So they're both four kilowatts. This is conventional, this is Ventus. So with these uh, speed increases that we've seen of over 200%, that resulted in a 58% uh, reduction in the overall processing time of this part. So in 23 seconds, Ventus technology, we're already done. Conventional technology, we're still processing the part. We're going to see that's going to take about 55 seconds. In the meantime, we're on to part number two, part number three, and so on. So now here with this conventional four kilowatt, we're just about done processing. And that's the main comparison of the side-by-side -side four kilowatts. So that was the productivity mode. 
Now we want to talk about quality. If maybe you're into the uh, medical field, maybe restaurant equipment, visual stuff, um, cosmetic plays a, a huge factor in your overall you know, quality of the part and what you're looking for. So with our quality mode, you'll see very nice tight striations in the part, little to no dross with the Ventus technology. Conventional, you're gonna see these, these large striations, your fingernail's gonna catch on that, it won't look as cosmetically as well, and there's gonna be dross at the bottom of the part that's gonna need to have a secondary operation to be removed. The curve mode that I spoke about, that comes into play when we get into our advanced automation systems, uh, part removal. Part removal is becoming uh, a great feature in what we have to offer to help keep up with the speeds of these fibers. And if you've ever tried to pick a part out of a, out of a sheet that was cut with a fiber, because of that very small beam diameter, it's very hard to pick that part up. It might get locked within the skeleton. So what we've done with choosing the right pattern, we've actually opened up that kerf value that gives you a lot more room to remove that part and you'll have much better success in your automated environments uh, with this type of pattern. So that was the Ventus technology, just off to this side of the booth. I'm gonna move on to the global debut of our three axis linear driven system with the Regis machine that's just off to my left over here. This has a lot of very high-end systems, uh, cameras, visions, uh, head recovery. Um, a lot of this is just geared for autonomous operations to where there's, the, try, try to reduce the need for any uh, operator involvement. But in the event that there is a need for an operator involvement, collisions or that and whatnot, uh, there's a lot of very user-friendly features and we'll be talking about some of those that make it easier for the operator to interact within the machine. You'll notice down here on the right-hand side, you have full access to the entire workpiece. Uh, that's gonna come in handy if you need to do any first article inspections, you can cut the part, reach in there, make sure that it's good, and then continue on processing the entire sheet. But you do have full access to the side of the machine. And you also notice in the first door, there's a 32 inch monitor. So at a glance, I can look over here, it's maybe a production you know, shop floor management, I can at a glance see that yes, the machine's still running, it's doing what it needs to do, or maybe you're an operator performing a, a secondary operation. So at a nice glance, you can see the, the uh, performance of the machine. So back in 2010, uh, we debuted the world's fastest linear driven system with our FOL AJ. It was a four kilowatt machine. Uh, so what we did here is we did a, with, to compare the drive systems of the world's fastest machine and now our new technology, our control processing, and how it interacts with the linear drive system of the Regis. Uh, we took the same nests and put them to a test. And what we found out was with this drive system, we achieved a 14% reduction in overall processing time versus the previous fastest linear driven system. So to talk about some of the high-end features of the machine, the eye nozzle checker is a camera vision system that performs a couple different functions. And I think one of the most important ones is for it to be able to monitor the quality of the nozzle. So in a production environment, uh, pre-programmed, you can tell it periodic to go over, check the condition of the nozzle. In this case here, you'll see that we may have had a part tip up and there's been uh, some uh, sacrifice to the uh, quality or the roundness of that hole. So we had to replace that and get back and start cutting again. Another thing you can do with this camera system is when you register a nozzle into the machine. Uh, in previous generations, you were at the mercy of the human intervention to say, yes, I entered the correct nozzle size. Uh, if an event you did not, then uh, it could affect your, your part quality and your cut conditions. So every time a nozzle is placed in the nozzle changer, the eye nozzle checker measures it and registers it accordingly. Uh, the laser beam conditioning system that we have, it's gonna monitor the optic lens to make sure that there's no pre-focusing or anything, any uh, focus values that might be changing due to uh, heat being introduced to the optic. So uh, if that's uh, recognized, we can go ahead and make that change on the fly and continue cutting uh, the part quality that is desired. The eye optic sensor is a constant monitoring of the, the uh, protective glass and the lens as well. So in the event that we see any splatter or any dust or contamination that would make its way onto the uh, protective window, we can send out a soft alarm to the operator and let them know that, hey, it, it might be time to perform some, uh, some routine maintenance to it. In previous generations, if that dust or contamination were to come onto the uh, protective window uh, and it wasn't recognized or caught soon enough, it may be burned into that piece of glass and then uh, you won't get the life expectancy that you're looking for. Uh, to talk about the recovery uh, collision system, uh, you know, if, you, if you've ever had a micro joint or a tab that didn't hold me or the per programmer didn't add that and you had a part tip up and you had a head collision, what this machine's gonna do is it's gonna retract the Z axis 
to avoid to get itself out of the collision it's going to remember that coordinate of where that collision took place the head's going to go back it's going to replace the nozzle it's going to with the eye nozzle checker in the camera system it's going to center that nozzle and it's going to then want to proceed back to processing the part it's going to remember where that collision occurred so what it'll do is skip on to the next piece of geometry and take off and cutting and resume function so this is a nice feature if you're thinking about a, an automated environment where one part tip up could shut you down for the whole evening now this is going to recover from that and you're going to continue processing throughout those unmanned shifts to wrap things up, the uh, V-Remote feature, that's a very nice feature. It allows you full access to the control uh, via any iPad or Android system that you have. Uh, the micro joint tab that I spoke about earlier, that allows the operator, when he identifies a micro joint isn't holding. If you've ever cut thin material, maybe poor quality material, and there's some warpage, uh, sometimes your pre-programmed micro joints don't hold like they should. So what the operator can do is walk up, touch that piece of geometry, and go ahead and expand that micro joint uh, so that it holds for the rest of the program. It makes a global change at that point. And the last feature is the eye camera assist system. What it allows you to do is to take that stack of remnants that I know everybody has laying around their shop floor. They just can't bring themselves to throw that scrap away. So what you can do is you can throw that remnant up on the, on the table. You can pull in your part. The operator can then rotate, find the perfect spot in which that nest fits, drop it on there, hit start, and go ahead and cut the part from there. That comes in very handy when you want to do maybe a quick job, uh, some rework, or maybe a first article inspection so that you can inspect the part before you continue to uh, run the rest of your 20 sheets of production. So again, thank you for coming out to Fabtech 2019. Please feel free to check out our Ventus and our Regis technology. Thank you.